And Gil Clancy back at ringside. And uh, Gil, uh, what are your thoughts on the fact that it's apparent Canizales did have a little problem making the weight? Well, you know, Orlando Canizales has two advantages, Tim. Number one, he jumped on the scale, they said 118, and properly he jumped right off and drank some liquid so they couldn't couldn't make him weigh again. So he's probably going to come in heavier than the 118, probably 123. But the other thing, the IBF has the fighters weigh in the night before the fight, not the day of the fight. So Canizales has had time to put on three or four good solid pounds uh, in this uh, time period. I don't think it's a good rule. I think the fighters should weigh in on the day of the fight. But it's an IBF rule, and uh, I just don't like it. All right, Gil, we're ready now for the ring introductions. Let's go to announcer Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Harris Marina and Ho Hotel and Casino here in the better Atlantic City, New Jersey, the boxing capital of the world. Today's main event is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, the Honorable Robert W. Lee, President. The judges for this title bout, Rocky Castellani, Frank Cairo and Eugene Grant. The man in charge of the scheduled 12 round IBF Vanaway Championship, referee Double S Steve Smoger. And now my good friends, introducing the principals. First in the red corner. He's wearing the red trunks with the white trim. Weighing in at 116 and one half pounds, all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina. He brings 25 wins, 19 by knockout, and 13 losses. The number one challenger and the former IBF Bantamweight champion, here is Kelvin the Raging Seabrooks. Seabrooks. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with the red and white trim. He weighed in at an even 118 pounds. This young man is from Laredo, Texas, with a record of 21 victories, 18 by knockout, one defeat, and one draw. The International Boxing Federation Bantamweight Champion of the World, boxing fans, here is Orlando Canizales. Canizales. The referee for the bout is Steve Smoker, and he brings the boxers to the center of the ring. Over them in the dressing room, are there any questions? Obey my commands, protect yourself at all times. God bless, fellas. Touch gloves. Let's go. Judges at ringside scoring on the 10-point must system under IBF rules will be Rocky Castellani from Atlantic City, Frankie Cairo from Trenton, Eugene Grant from Plainfield, all from the state of New Jersey. Of course, the boxers from out of state. Canizales from Laredo, Texas. Seabrooks from Charlotte, North Carolina. Their second meeting, a rematch of an outstanding, exciting fight of a year ago. Rated by many the best fight of 1988. Seabrooks in red, Canizales in blue. One thing we know uh, in the history of Seabrooks is that uh, sometimes he does have the tendency to take some punishment early. He's gotten off the floor many times and gone on to victory. Sometimes he has not. Well, Tim, yes, in the last fight he was down in the first round. And you know, he stays right there. Kevin Rooney's been working on his defense, told him to move his head, move his head, but it looked to me like he's the same stationary Kelvin Seabrooks. Round one scheduled for 12, IBF Bantamweight Championship, 118 pounders. Kenneth Alice appearing uh, very uh, relaxed all day long here, talking with our Dan Jiggets uh, earlier and very confident, poised, and looks relaxed in the ring right now. Well, both of these guys can punch, Tim, so I wouldn't advise anybody to relax, <laughs> especially the viewers. Is Alice, 23 years of age, the champion. Seabrooks, 26. Good movement there by Seabrooks under the combination of Kenneth Alice. Lands a right hand lead to Seabrooks. Kenneth Alice, an outstanding amateur career, 108 victories, 12 defeats, semi finalist in the 1983 National Golden Gloves. with a good combination. The last exchange. You can hear Kevin Rooney 
telling uh, Seabrooks to bend his knees, bend his knees, stay low. Gonzalez countering to the body. With a good stiff jab. Under the 30-second mark, we go round one. Him in the last fight, Canizales was able to beat Seabrooks to the punch when they both flew right hands. And that was the big difference in the fight. Seabrooks has a tendency to lead with that right hand. Final seconds of round number one, scheduled for 12, live from Atlantic City on CBS Sports Sun Saturday. Canizales and Seabrooks. Canizales, Jesse Reed, his trainer, waiting for him out of the oh, Houston of Boxing himself. Association. They a lot of and he tried and to operated by exchange. Josephine Abercrombie. What he's doing, he's trying to counterpunch you with the right hand. He's trying to set you as you come out. All right, you've been going out to your right a lot. Pivot out to the left and come with a hook on him. He's leaning over his feet. Every time you throw the right hand, drop the left hook to the body, okay? Everything else looks real good. You're showing your jab real well, and you're, you're using your head. But the only thing is you're going out to the right all the time. Start pivoting out to the left a little bit. Make him look at a different look. A little grease. A little grease. And a lot of feints are on to draw him into some exchanges. You'll win the exchanges. He's really, you can get him out early if you go to work on him. Stay here. Take advantage of the You're hearing Jesse Reed, and there's the challenger, Kelvin Seabrooks. Round number two. Scheduled for 12, Seabrooks in red, Canizal is the champion in blue. I know it was music to your ears to hear Jesse Reed say, throw that left hook behind the right hand. Well, Tim, that's what we work on in the gym all the time. Every time those guys throw the right hand, we say hook. <laughs> but he said to throw it to the body. Canizal has got a little kind of a half uppercut in, two in a row on Seabrooks. And there's a good left hand from Seabrooks. Good solid jab from Seabrooks scoring. Up to now, Tim, it's been one punch by Seabrooks, but three or four by Canizales. He's putting his punches together. talking about it's one two three four five right hand grazing the chin of Seabrooks from the champion Countess Alice Seabrooks with a good right hand and another left hook big one by Countess Alice that rock Seabrooks and a right behind it Seabrooks bangs back to the body Canizal is coming up the center now, finding a little room up the middle. Seven, seven, go away. Again, you can hear Kevin Rooney saying, don't wait. When you're not doing anything else, Tim, you should be jabbing. There's that good left jab. right to the body. Seabrook's landing a right to the head. And then another right, right down the pipe and a left hook to the face of the champion. Seabrook's putting some pressure on Canis Alice now here. Good left landed by Seabrook. Right above us. And another left, missing with the right. Final seconds, round number two. I like the way Canizales hides on the inside. And Canizales with a company. Great action in the final 30 seconds of round two. Blood from the nose of the challenger Seabrooks. 
to go back early into that second round. It was a big left hook. I think we're going to see here from Canizales. Good straight right hand, Tim. Short right hand. But I like the way Canizales is so comfortable inside. He can get those punches off inside real well. And now here's Seabrook's coming back. Nice straight right hand lead. There it is again. He's working that right hand overtime, Tim, but that's when it, the way he got nailed last time, throwing that right hand too often, getting beaten to the punch. Let's go, Ken. Let's go, Ken. All right, we're ready now for round number three. Thank you, Dan. This is Kenneth Allis in blue, Seabrooks in red. And a good short, sharp right hand from Kenneth Allis to open the third round. Here, Seabrook's got nailed trying to throw that right hand lead, Tim. Both fighters finding openings now and landing heavily in this exchange right in the middle of the ring, a right hand from the champion. Good defense by Seabrook's then, Tim. Still some blunt from the nose of Seabrook's, but no real trouble. Right hand lead by Kenneth Alice, and that worked. He got three punches in behind it. And Seabrook's face is starting to lump up pretty good, Tim. Left jab by Seabrook's, missed with that right hand, short. Blocks the left hook from the champion. Canizales is a complete fighter, Tim. He faints with his feet. He steps over to the side. He hides on the inside and puts his punches together. Look at that side-to-side -side movement. And he'll sneak in that right-hand lead to effect. Big right hand by Seabrooks. That stopped Canizales in his tracks. That's what Seabrooks is going to have to do. He's going to have to hit Canizales on the chin and get him out of there because he's not going to outpoint him. Left uppercut scored a big one. Under a minute to go in round three. Well, we mentioned that this would probably be an extension of the last fight. It certainly is. Yes, it is indeed. Yes, when they're both flowing right hands, when you have to keep your eyes open. Fighters had just one fight since the last meeting. Big left by Canizales and left of the body back from Seabrooks. Under 30 seconds we go. Seabrooks lands and then Canizales back with a combination. Another combination by Canizales. Coming to the end of round three. Bomb throwing by both boxers. <laughs> round number four, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy. We've had non-stop action between Orlando Canizales, the champion in blue, Kelvin Seabrooks, the challenger in red. The IBF Bantamweight title at stake. And Kim, uh, Tim, basically what Kevin Rooney told Seabrooks between rounds was get off first. He said, don't wait, don't wait. Get off first. Canizales has been the busier man, and that's obviously what Rooney's trying to mitigate against. Well, his hands and feet are busy, Tim. Kelvin Seabooks is a flat-footed target where Canizales keeps moving side to side. There he goes again. He hides on the guy, steps over to the side. Seabooks is always there, putting plenty of pressure, but he's ready for the receipt every time. Yeah, good left hand from Canizales countering. Body from Seabrooks. Canizales never fails to punch back. Blood from the nose of Seabrooks again. Have to look for Seabrooks to land the big punch. Orlando Canizales. Brother Gabby was the WBA Bantamweight champion. 
Runs in the family, and indeed he's spent a lot of time working with his brother in the past, sparring, training together. As he came up from 112 to 115 out of 118. There's that Canizal, he's such an elusive guy. It looks like he's right in front of you, Tim, but he never is. See that step to the side? That's the difference. The better defense and the faster hands. A minute to go. Round number four. Seabrooks. Good left and right from the challenger, Seabrooks. Trying to pin Canizales on the ropes. Canizales works his way out of there without undue damage. No time for rest when these two guys are in there. Under 30 seconds we go. And Kevin Rooney's using the old custom auto method. He's calling numbers 7-2. I wonder if these guys have time to think about 7-2 and those punches are coming at you the way they're coming today. Final seconds of the fourth round. The champion, Orlando Canizales in blue. The challenger, Kelvin Seabrooks in red. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy were into round five, scheduled for 12. IBF Bantamweight Championship live from Harris in Atlantic City. Uh, Tim, we had mentioned before that the IBF has the weigh-in uh, the night before the fight, which, again, Canizales was the guy that was rumored to have a little problem with the weight. It should work to his advantage. Now, if the weigh-in had been this morning, perhaps later in the fight, uh, Canizales would start to wear out, but he's had time to bring himself back. I like that little move that he takes. That He slides over to the side. Kelvin just keeps stalking him, looking to throw that big right hand. A little bit of an abrasion under the right eye of the champion, Canizales. There has been blood from the nose of the challenger, Seabrook, since round two. But, uh, neither uh, little injury, anything to worry about at this point. That was good. Left to the ear, scored by Seabrook, over the right hand of Canizales. It is safe to say that Seabrooks has been better defensively, even though he hasn't had shown much more movement. He has been blocking punches better this fight. I, I see a big improvement now that uh, Kevin Rooney's been working with him up in the Catskills. He is better defensively, but again, he's in with a real sharpshooter. Now, that's a point well taken. Canizales, a very accurate puncher, and a busy one at that. There's that slide over to the right again. And here, uh, Kevin Rooney calling out the numbers of the combinations he wants from Seabrooks again. Under a minute to go, round four, an uppercut landed by Canizales. And a right hand, round five, pardon me. Seabrooks a little short with the right hand. The big difference in this fight right now, Tim, is the maneuverability and the footwork of Canizales. Seabrook is flat-footed. You can always find him with a punch. Canizales is, Canizales is much more elusive. There are 30 seconds to go. I can recall you're comparing him in style and indeed somewhat in looks to young Roberto Duran. Yes, he reminds me very much of Duran when Duran beat my guy Kennedy Buchanan for the lightweight title. Seabrooks landed a good left hand. That got Canizales' attention. That's what he has to do. But there's a right hand back. Seabrooks in trouble. Canizales jumps on him. Final seconds of round five. Oh, no, no. Seabrooks had just landed his best punch of the fight, and Canizales came right back and rocked the challenger into the ropes. Don't breathe out your nose. Don't breathe out the nose. Let's take a look at that action right near the end of the round at about 10 seconds to go. There we see Seabrooks missing that right hand, Tim. 
And Canizales takes full advantage of it by nailing him with a straight right hand of his own. And that's the way Seabrook's got in trouble in the last fight. Throwing too many Smooth. right hands. Now listen, he's hitting you with right hands just a little bit because what you're doing, you're not coming back on it. Make him pay when he throws a right hand, he'll quit throwing, all right? That's Jesse Reed, trainer of Orlando Canizales. You look good. Keep double shifting on him. I want you going right and left, both sides. To set him up with a hook. You can get him with a hook. Here you go. You're forgetting your hook, all right? Don't reach with it. I got you. So you can see Jesse Reed, even though his fighter finished the round well and had Seabrooks in a little trouble. So you can see Jesse Reed, even though his fighter finished the round well and had Seabrooks in a little trouble, was more concerned about the right hand that he had taken just seconds earlier. We're into the sixth round, scheduled for 12. The champion, Canizales in blue, Seabrooks in red. Another action fight, as we had a year ago between these two young men. You know, Kevin Rooney had told Seabrooks to get off first, get off first, but now he's standing and standing there trying to figure things out. He should be snapping that jab. And he just took a hard left hook from the champion. Kevin Rooney imploring him to keep the right hand up after that hook land, another left land. Carol Seabrooks, uh, Kelvin's wife here at ringside. And Seabrooks is starting to push that left hand now, Tim, instead of snapping it. That can be very dangerous. Low blow warning to Seabrooks from referee Steve Smoger. He's otherwise not had a lot to do. These two guys have been busy. They haven't been clinching. Well, Tim, we have well-conditioned fighters and a well-conditioned ref. That helps, indeed. Kelvin Seabrooks let a little war whoop as Canizales landed the combination, but Canizales just fired and, another one. And Canizales just got rocked, yes, Tim. he did. A right hand from Seabrooks. Got rocked. Yeah, this movement by Canizales is his first kind of defensive movement. He's going backwards here. Seabrooks on the attack. Left landed by Seabrooks. And look at the maneuverability on Seabrooks now. Side to side inside. You may have learned something from Canizales. Under a minute to go in round number six. I think it just takes Seabrook's five or six rounds to get warmed up. Gil, he seems to do his best just about now as he did in the last fight. That's he won the middle his, round. That's been his history, Tim. Slow starter. Join the combat, 30 seconds into round number six. Now Seabrooks is slipping, but he should be punching more. Canizal is definitely going backwards more here since that good shot from Seabrooks. Final seconds of the sixth round. Number seven, the challenger Kelvin Seabrooks now having a little problem with his right eye. He had a good round in number six. We scored that for him, but that right eye starting to close from the punishment absorbed at the hands of the champion Canizales. And Mike Hall tried to work on that eye, Tim, but he didn't open it up very much. It's almost completely closed. On our scorecard, we've got four rounds for Canizales, two for Seabrooks. No two point round scored as yet. There have been no knockdowns. Into round seven, scheduled for 12. Combination scored by the champion. You see the difference. Seabrook's the straight line guy. Canizales the side to side guy. I think also that uh, Canizales is a little more wary than he was prior to round number six, though, Gil. Well, he got wobbled, Tim. He sure did. Slapping left to the ear of the 
champion. He pops the jab back. No hook back that time. Jesse Reed will get after him for that one. Well, he's a little short with his punches now. Yeah, he's trying to punch and get out of the way at the same time, Tim. You can't do that. Lunging right hand from Seabrooks. And it's left. And it's all short again. Definitely off the rhythm he showed in the first five rounds. Under a minute to go. Round seven. Seems to me as if Canizales may have hurt his right hand, Tim, because after he landed that right hand, he winced and shook his right hand a little bit. May have a bad right hand. Well, mind you, that little habit, we just saw it again there. It is, I think it's a habit, Gil. We saw it in the last fight. In fact, we commented on it at that time, not to say it may not be hurt, but he has done it earlier in the fight. Under 30 seconds to go. Almost as always trying to get loose with it, but uh, it's a little bit dangerous. Neither fighter landing effectively in that exchange. We come to the final seconds of round number seven. Live from Atlantic City on CBS Sports Saturday. Seabrooks and Canizales. Well, there's a look at Kelvin Seabrooks. Uh, you can see the eye nearly closed and blood from the nose, but we're into round number eight. Tim, I, from Atlantic City. I like the way Orlando Canizales got off the stool as if to say, okay, now it's going to be all business. He looked like a different guy walking out of the corner. Well, and he's put immediate pressure on. And we're told uh, from Dan Jiggett's between rounds that uh, as far as he can tell in that Canizales corner, they say uh, nothing wrong with the right hand of the champion. Seabrooks uh, definitely will have a vision problem. The rest of the way, though, on the right eye, almost closed. A little more swelling under the right eye of the champion, Canizales. No knockdowns thus far, but a lot of tough punches absorbed by both guys. Canizales is not punching with the conviction that he punched with early attempt. Still making those moves, though, those side-to-side -side moves that are bothering Seabrook so much. Again, Seabrook is putting pressure on, but forgetting to throw punches. Is that the key, Gil? What do you tell Seabrooks here about how to attack this guy? How do you hit him? You have to, Tim, if you, I always say if you can't hit a guy with a jab, you're not going to hit him with any other punch. So as he's moving after him, he should be feinting the jab, throwing one jab, throwing two jabs. But work off that left jab, but keep it busy. Don't just try to look for a big opening. They don't See take place. Landed a good right hand. Got Canizales' attention again, and he knows it. Wild swinging here. Canizales on the ropes, and Siebert trying to find an opening. Gets the left in, a right counter from the champion. Under a minute to go. Round eight. Seabrook's unable to really capitalize with that opportunity after his good, solid right. Didn't they take turns? Now it's Canizales coming on. And no rest for the wicket in this fight either. They have not stopped punching since the first bell. Under 30 seconds to go. Round eight. up Seabrook some now. The left wobbles him. Back to the ropes. Hannah's Ellis jumps on him here. The end of round number eight. Hannah's Ellis in some trouble in the corner. 
Uh, rather, uh, Seabrook's birthdays. We're looking at Kelvin Seabrook's. Kenneth Dallas had him pinned up against the ropes with a good left hand that sent him reeling back into the ropes. How you feel? No, I... Open up, open up. Doc, look him up, look him up. That's good, good Kevin. Kevin. Kelvin right. Seabrook's. Okay, Doc. Very game guy, and he's in the fight, Tim, but he's taking a battery. Let's take a look at this replay now. There's that first short left hook. And you see Seabrooks continues to try to punch back. There's that little in and out by Candace Alice that's so effective. Doesn't look like he's doing much, but just that little in and out does the job. Right and the left, sending Seabrooks back to the ropes. Live in the corner now, Kelvin Seabrook. Oh, wait, they get hurt to go away from this kid. What this kid now? Go with him right now. Right Mission now. doctor came in. Right Took a look. He's now uh, discussing the, with the situation now. with the Steve Smoger, the referee. Seabrook. Round number nine upcoming. Scheduled for 12. And again, Canazal scheduled for 12. And again, Canazal is flying off the stool. Let's go a combination. Seabrook still wobbling. But he's punching back, Tim. Yes, he is. Canizales is trying to get some pressure on him. You see how cool Canizales is? He just doesn't walk in and punch. He sets you up beautifully. In and out, side to side. Two left hooks, and that bothered Seabrooks. Right on the eye that's bothering him. Punches back with the right to the body. He's definitely having trouble seeing. The doctor's on his feet, what, looking closely at him. Canis Alice. And then you see Canis Alice throw those punches and then high. Go over to the side, come back again, set things up again. What a cool kid he is. I almost closed the right eye of Seabrooks. The doctor watching closely as is referee Steve Smoger. And Candace Alice is a little tired now, Tim. He's worked very, very hard. Mouth is wide open. Oh, we've seen the same work ethic we saw in the first fight that went the into the 15th round before Canizales finally stopped Seabrooks to win the title. Seabrooks definitely having trouble seeing out of that right eye, and trying to cover up as best he can. Still throw the right hand, that's tough duty. Again, 26-year-old challenger from Charlotte, North Carolina, fighting now virtually one-eyed into the ninth round. Lands a big right hand. Tim Canizales is trying to take a little rest, and he's letting St. Brooks back in. He's a little tired. Under the minute mark, we go in round nine. Seabrooks keeps coming forward, trying to land that big right-hand bomb that would turn this around for him. Right hand by Kenneth Alice got through. He oh. also moves to the side. He sets things up so beautifully. Then he comes back with his combinations. Kenneth Alice is definitely a tired young man for right now. Final seconds of round nine. This is scheduled for 12, the IBF championship distance. Back in Atlantic City, round number 10. See if we can find out from uh, Dan Jiggets what the uh, Dr. Charles Wilson has to say about that eye. Tim, I'm sitting alongside the Dr. Ringside. He said the problem is, is that right eye of uh, Kelvin Seabrooks is starting to close. And as a result, he cannot see left hooks coming out of And certainly, uh, Orlando Canizales has been taking advantage of that. Back to you. All right, Dan, so they'll watch it very closely, both the doctor and the referee, Steve Smoger. We're into the tent. It is a championship fight. They'll give the challenger every reasonable option without exposing him to any uh, serious injury. And Tim, uh, Canizales starts out every round, and he really does a job on uh, Kelvin Seabrooks in the first minute, but then he runs out of gas a little bit. Starts out every round after that minute rest real well. Pick it up, pick it up. 
slot left jab from Seabrooks. He continually puts pressure on Canizales, always in front of him. Kevin Rooney really wants the 8 2, whatever that is. Well, oh, a, right, a straight right hand landed, Tim. Whether that's the 8 or not, I don't know, but a straight right hand landed. And you know, you, I can see a definite improvement in Kelvin Seabrooks. He's, there he goes, weaving under punches again. He never did that in the past. Kevin Rooney's done a good job on Seabrooks. Win or lose this fight. Seabrooks just keeps coming back for more punishment, and Canizales is dishing it out. Minute to go. Round number 10. Seabrooks is going to have to take some chances now, Tim. He's going to have to start to throw that long, straight right hand and take a chance that Canizales won't counter. He's going to have to hit Canizales and hurt him to get into this fight. Seabrooks scoring to the body there. Right to the ear. Forehead and he bangs away from the ropes. See, Brooks is starting to wear down again, Tim. They had better take a good look at Kelvin Seabrooks between rounds. The final seconds of the tenth. The slope fest of the bell. Round number 11, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy with Dan Jiggets at ringside watching Orlando Canizales and Kelvin Seabrooks and Kevin Rooney in the Seabrooks corner. Told his fighter he's behind on points. He has to win by a knockout. And we would agree with that based on our unofficial scorecard. And Tim, uh, Kelvin Seabrooks finished the last round throwing punches and Kevin Rooney said go out the same way, but he didn't go out the same way. Canizales took over right away as soon as the bell rang. Canizal is now working the body in the head with Seabrooks pinned in one place. Tim, they had better watch Kelvin Seabrooks. Sometimes a fighter has too much courage for his own good. And he's taking a pounding now, a bad pounding. Okay, okay. And okay. Seabrooks right. is going to, that's enough. Steve Smoker steps in and says that's enough for Kelvin Seabrooks. Taking that punishment right above us and had no argument when Steve Smoker stepped in. And Orlando Canizales has retained his IBF Bantamweight Championship with an 11th round stoppage of Kelvin Seabrooks, a game and brave challenger. And there they are, two outstanding young men and exciting young boxers. And we'll be back with more from Harris in Atlantic City in just a moment. We're back looking into the corner of Kelvin Seabrooks, uh, who just uh, taken a little too much punishment and was unable to go any farther. Steve Smoger uh, recognized that as Seabrooks literally put his hands down, stepped in and stopped the fight in the 11th round. And let's go back into the 11th round as they continue to work on that right eye. There's the champion, Orlando Canizales, and back into the 11th round action. You can see that solid left hook there really did some damage, and Seabrooks unable to punch back, and Canizales now scoring at will, and Seabrooks unable to see and really in difficulty here. Steve Smoger, the referee, watching very closely. Seabrooks unable to punch back, and right there you can see him saying, that's it. Steve, I can't do any more here. He literally stopped the fight himself, but he certainly was a game performer, as we've come to expect from Kelvin Seabrooks. And there's the champion, Orlando Canizales. For the official result, let's go to the ring announcer, Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Double S, Steve Smoger, stops this bout at 47 seconds of the 11th round, and a winner by a TKO, and still the International Boxing Federation Bantamway champion, Orlando Canizales. Canizales. Orlando Canizales. Here's the defending champion. Maybe we can get uh, Kelvin Seabrooks over here. As Bob Lee from the IBF uh, brings the champion's belt out. 
Well, you two guys did it again. That's all I can say. It was a, a lot like the first one. Did you have any reason to expect the same kind of a fight, Orlando? Well, I knew, you know, Tipsy Bush is a tough, he's a tough individual, and I knew it was, it was going to be a tough fight. Yeah. And that's, you in, a lot, in a lot of other fights, you would look like the loser. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you'll see that. However, uh, Kelvin Seabrooks, I must say, looks a little worse. That's quite a bad lump. Yeah, right. It was my boxing. Hey, it was a war. Yeah. It was a war. Every time we fight, it was a yeah. war. Yeah, it's, <laughs> Kelvin, uh, I know at the end of the 10th round, uh, Kevin Rooney said you had to uh, win by a knockout or, or stay on the stool. You wouldn't stay on the stool, of course, but you knew when it was over, didn't you? Right, I sort of figured, you know, I'd go down fighting. And, you know, like I said, Kamazad is a great fighter. And, uh, um, you know, he's done a lot as far as boxing go, and he reaches go to 10. All right, are you going to keep going, Kelvin? Oh, yeah. All right. And Orlando, what about you? What, have you got a target in mind? Well, right now, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm exhausted. It was a tough <laughs> fight, and, you know, Seabrooks, I give a lot of credit. He's a tough fighter. You are two exciting young boxers, and you're two terrific guys. We you, thank I'll you for you being before, with us again. You know, big things come in little packages. That's right. <laughs> big <laughs> things come in little packages. 118 pounder. All right. The champion, Orlando Canizales, former champion Kelvin Seabrooks, both champions in their own right. Still ahead on CBS Sports Saturday. We've got more activity on CBS Sports Saturday for you. Right now, let's go to uh, Dan 